Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Katan Patel. Thanks for being on the show again, Katan. Thank you, Whitney, for the opportunity. Very excited to be on the show. Katan is a high-performance coach that helps motivated real estate entrepreneurs create more income and impact by aligning their, their thoughts, emotions, and actions. He has mastered the art of getting results by combining techniques from Tony Robbins, Wim Hof, and Dr. Joe Dispenza. I'm not, I'm not familiar with him. Uh, he, his unique program will give you the clarity, confidence, and strategy you need to achieve your goals faster and create an edge. I would also encourage you to go back and listen to show 274. Seems like forever ago, uh, but it was a July of, of 2019. So about a year and a half ago, uh, where uh, Katan and I talked about just the internal mindset game and, and uh, just transformation. So uh, you can learn a lot more about him there as well. And I know he's going to share other ways you can find him and, and learn more about him. But but today, you know, he is helping people uh, just learn how to get into this business and being successful working with investors and raising capital. And that would be a great topic. So many people, I mean, ask me every week or want to schedule calls just to talk about this. And, and uh, it's not easy getting started, that's for sure. Uh, but there's just some specific things that have helped people in such big ways. So, uh, Katan, welcome to the show. Uh, you know, let's dive right in. I know you also go by KP, uh, just so the listener knows. But, uh, you, know, uh, you know, why don't you give us an update on what's happening with you and your business right now? And let's jump into just, you know, your really your unique ability here, how, how you're helping people. Uh, yes. So on my business side of raising capital, I'm finishing the process to get the broker dealer license, getting affiliated one. Uh, so I could continue raising capital. I enjoy connecting with investors and educating them. Uh, that's one piece of the business. And the other piece of the business is I've realized that at the end of the day, the information's out there. But how do we know what is the right information for us at this point? What do I really need to listen? What do I really need to work? That would, because we have limited time. So I focus on that piece, helping investors diagnose what their challenges are and, and work with them to create a strategy, something that would be unique, that would work for you to get results instead of just taking action randomly and hoping something would crack. <laughs> Yeah, if, we, if we're doing things randomly and just hoping something happens, it's probably not going to happen the way you expect. And it usually doesn't anyway, but I, I don't know. That seems so, uh, yeah, got to have a plan, right? Got to yes. have a plan. And there's plenty of people that's been there before you that can help you uh, speed that process up. Uh, you know, let's back up just a little bit, though. A broker dealer's license, you know, a lot of the listeners may not have heard of that before and, and why that may even be useful um, and, and we don't have to dive into the legal side of, the, of a lot of that. However, why is that important? Why is that something you're pursuing? So for me, over the years, uh, I've done flips. I brought capital to the co-sponsors. I've done everything. And I realized that my unique strategy is just raising capital. I don't want to buy buildings. I just want to have equity by raising capital. That's the niche I carved out rather than me trying to do everything, right? So like finding deals or talking to contractors or asset management doesn't really excite me, but finding great sponsors and doing the due diligence and looking at numbers and presenting that to investors excites me. And to be in that business, if you are not involved with the sponsor on a day-to-day -day, from a legal standpoint, you are a placement agent because you're getting compensation based on the amount you raise. And to do that, you need to have a broker dealer working with you uh, to you know, follow all the SEC and, and FINRA guidelines. So if your business model, if somebody's business model is just to raise money for other people's deal uh, exclusively, then you know, it would be very important to get this license. And it also opens up the opportunity for you to uh, do more things uh, in, in that realm if, if your business model supports it. Yeah. So, you know, it's just something I've seen a few people pursue recently. And so it's, it's interesting. I know it's a difficult process and, and very intense, uh, but uh, congratulations to you for pursuing it and, 
And uh, but let's jump in, you know, to this uh, capital raising uh, skill and and how to develop that, and maybe how you've helped some people. Maybe you can give some examples. Uh, like I said, I know I get questions weekly from people about how we've done and how I've how I raised capital and, and, you know, it got started, all those things, but, uh, but let's jump in there and how, you know, how you help people and, and how, you know, let's help them uh, with some actionable steps, you know, especially from the beginning. And then we can dive into some more uh, technical pieces as well. Sure. So a quick backstory is years ago when I was buying uh, three family homes, one day I just realized that there's only so much money we could invest our own capital. We are always going to run out. And as long as I want to be in real estate, it doesn't matter what I buy, where I buy, and what I want to do with it, I'll always need capital. So when I had that breakthrough moment, I realized I need to master this thing because you will, you could save more, you could make a million dollars on a refinance, buy another property, and you'll go back to that same square, right? So for people who are starting, the first thing would be the branding piece. Uh, very important to have a brand I'm not just talking about having business cards and websites and some decks, but having some core, core messages about uh, two, two levels. One is the personal level. So for me, when I was a pharmacist, I was very passionate about creating passive income on the side. So my message to other pharmacists and doctors and attorneys and passive investors was, hey, I get it. You don't have the time and energy, but that doesn't mean you just don't do any investment. There's the passive alternative, right? So that was my story. I've always been around numbers and I like the investment side. So I developed my own personal brand. For you, it could be some kind of different message. And that's how you really connect with the investors because too many investors uh, do gun jumping. So basically, you are talking about the deal. This is the best market. This is the best return. But what happens is you have not built that trust and connection with the investor. And to build the trust and connection with the uh, passive investors or active investors, you need to have your authentic story out in your brand. So for me, it was, you know, I grew up in India. I came to this country not speaking English. For you, it could be something like, you were not happy with that corporate job or whatever that's, you know, true, that, that, made you go into real estate, right? So we incorporate that into your branding elements. And then on a business side, you want to communicate those things as well that, you know what, my philosophy is that you should always have not just using the word conservative underwriting or big metros, but going a little bit into detail. What do you really believe in terms of strategy? So I believe that, you know, a good operation and good management company It's just fundamental. Or if an NOI is jumping more than 20%, it just seems too high of a risk. Or I believe in a defined strategy of only looking certain assets in certain markets. Or I believe in an opportunistic view. Whatever your business model and your thought process is, you want to extract some of those points out. So this way, what happens is when investors come across your deck or your uh, call, or your website, you just have the same message going. And the message is kind of based on you and and connection. Then later on, you could dive into uh, talking about the deals and stuff. Uh, I love that. They're just breaking it down like that. It it seems simple, right? Uh, But most people do not do those things uh, when they're trying to get started, but it can make such a big difference. And I like how you laid out even your personal story and thinking about like, like you coming from a pharmacy background, you know, that helps you to niche down as well, doesn't it? Uh, yes. You know, so you don't have just like a uh, shotgun approach. Uh, you're you're, you're going to connect with those individuals with a similar background. Uh, and with you, it may be people from India or maybe pharmacists or, uh, you know, have, have you seen that happen that way? Absolutely. So I definitely think when you start, the next point is to developing an investor profile, which I didn't do in, in the beginning. So when you don't have that clarity, I'm talking to everybody and a lot of people wanted to partner and they they are pulling you in different direction. That happens in the beginning. But when you are very, very clear that I'm only looking for passive investors that want to put $50,000 or more into class B apartments with this kind of return structure and this kind of risk profile, it really makes it clear. You have a 10 minute call or your communication, you just know, okay, they are not a good fit. 
doesn't mean everybody would invest. And, and I didn't knew about this thing. So I didn't develop a profile and I'm chasing investors left and right. So having that profile and definitely using an affinity. So we all have some kind of base that we are affinity. So if let's say for me, it was pharmacy or doctors for you, you are such a, you're, do you love golf so much? Maybe you are in that community, right? Maybe you are religious and you have the religious communities and things like that. There's always some angle of your life somewhere where a lot of times, you know, normally you wouldn't reach out. You'll feel like, I don't want to reach out. I'm, I'm appearing salesy or something like that. Uh, which which we could talk about later, but that's that's what I would encourage to find that affinity group. Nice. Okay, so we're going to develop our core message. We're going to develop uh, our core messages, and then we're going to develop that investor profile. Uh, you know, what's next? Yeah. So you develop that investor profile. So now you kind of have an idea of you know what kind of people you're looking for, right? Now you develop that the the, the launch pad, so as to speak. So the launch pad for most people would be the inner circle. I call it the inner circle. It could be anybody that has, you know, you went to school with, you worked at a previous job and whatnot, because what happens is those people already know you uh, and a lot of them will trust you fairly quickly. So only thing you need to bring to the equation is can they trust your expertise with investments and real estate versus getting a lead from somebody you don't know, you need to build that rapport because after all, they are putting big amounts of money to work with you. So so developing that inner circle, having a quick Excel sheet or something like that and not making any assumptions. I reached out to a pharmacy classmate like six, seven years later. Turns out their husband does exactly syndication investments and nothing else. And they were like so excited, right? And they're like, I can't believe this. And and I had so many, I reached out to a childhood friend I hadn't connected in in 15, 20 years. And it was just good. It, it won't be a good fit for everybody. But the way I was doing was I'm giving them opportunity. I'm educating them. Uh, and if it's not a right fit, I wouldn't offer them the investment if they don't have the merits to look at the pros and cons. But a lot of these folks are waiting for somebody they know to bring something because they are too afraid on themselves to just go online and and just contact somebody, right? So you're giving them that opportunity. Speak a little bit about helping that expertise trust. You know, yeah, you know, you do have that trust potentially already with that that friend or or, or family member. You know, they may like you, trust you. They've known you for a very long time. Uh, but I know I, I get the question also often where. It's when, you know, they first hear you're in, you're in the real estate business, they're like, well, wait a minute. You know, I thought you were a pharmacist yeah. or I thought yeah. you were doing this thing over here. What, you know, where did this come from? Uh, and so developing that expertise trust, how do you do that? Yeah. So I, you know, I, for me, I just told them my story that, you know, I realized that I need to create some passive income. So I bought a single family house with two partners. It went well. Then what another one, another one, it didn't go well in the beginning, but then eventually, and then I bought more and more. And one day I realized that I need to leverage. And then people started reaching out to you. Right. So for me, my first apartment syndication deal, I had the experiences of investing in properties to leverage. I had made an LP investment that I leveraged. I have been reading reports about years and years about how to do this repositioning class A value add. I didn't even knew at that time what I was reading, but it made sense to me when the opportunity came to me, right? So you a lot of ways to demonstrate because we all have to start somewhere on the scale, right? Sometimes you are just at so much of a beginning, um, all you need to remember is as long as you are a few steps ahead, you have something to, to contribute. And what you could do in the very beginning, if you have done no deals at all, I would say just read all the books, listen to all the podcasts. And if you could put a considerable amount of time, you will have a model forming in your head about how all this is working. So you could communicate the basis of that model and people would understand that they'll see your sincerity, right? If, if you're being sincere and you're learning and you're excited about all this thing, they'll, they'll connect with you and, and they'll understand that you know, you're starting in it and if you're putting your own capital, 
okay, we want to put our capital beside you two or something. Anything else about the launch pad specifically before we, before we move on? Uh, one more thing with the launch pad is also transferring the success. You might have like a sales job where you are doing great, or we always have some accomplishments in the past, but it's just human nature to forget about it quickly and move on. So as you do all these things, you might want to look at past and pick up something that you could bring into your presentation with the investors. So I'll tell investors that, okay, I'm not the experienced pro real estate investor, but I got a doctor of pharmacy while learning English at an accelerated pace. And if I could do that, I understand this is different work, but all it needs is just me putting in the time and energy and then I'm going to have the mentors or whatnot. So anybody could use that approach as well to, to bring their past success and just kind of marry them with, with this future target. Great advice right there. And yeah, yeah. Using that past success, that expertise, showing what you've done. Uh, and I wanted to highlight one thing also you said, uh, and, and you said uh, something like this, but as long as you're a few steps ahead, a few steps ahead, uh, you have something to contribute to others. Uh, and I think a lot of times people feel like, oh, well, you know, I just, I don't have any way that I can add value or I don't have any way to connect with people. You know, I don't have any way to help them. Uh, but ultimately, you, you probably do have a lot of ways, right? And I think that's a big mindset shift when, no, you know, even if you've just been studying, you maybe hadn't even done a deal yet, but, uh, but you've been studying and you've been working harder and, and you're ahead of that other person that hadn't done anything yet. <laughs> you know, yes. you have some way to, to help and add value. Absolutely. I, I agree. And here's the thing. If you give that value and forget about them investing or anything, but who knows what they'll do with that, right? Now you're moving on, but you got a little bit of practice and the ways things come back around, everything's connected will be surprising. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and you got better at, at just trying to help, right? And putting yeah. yourself out there. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we, we've gone over the launch pad. Anything, what's after that? So now you have the launch pad. Now you have done the investor conversations. And what happens with the inner circle is clarifying your message and being good on phone with the investors and, you know, understanding their needs, understanding their motivations, understanding their challenges is very, very critical. It doesn't happen overnight, but the beauty is for the people you know and trust from the insider list that we made, it's much easier to connect. You have low pressure situation. So you get the ability to practice these things. So later on, when you have an investor that's considering putting 200,000 in your deal, you don't have to worry about making a blunder or looking like it's, it's your fifth call, right? Uh, so after all that, and once you start making these calls, you will start getting feedback. Um, very, very important thing that I tell my clients is sometimes we get so busy taking action that we stop paying attention to the feedback. Anytime you take action, you get three kinds of feedback. It's either a positive feedback. This is working. Somebody wants to invest. They're interested. It could be neutral, nothing shaking, or it could be negative, right? Negative in the sense of like, maybe this is not the right way. So it's very critical to see what messages you are getting, the feedback. And then based on that, you reshape your list or the way you talk or your branding or whatever that particular situation is. What are some, some things you're using now uh, just to more automate this process of finding investors or nurturing those relationships? I want to move forward just a little bit before we run out of time. You know, those who are already, let's say they've already developed, uh, you know, their core messages and they're kind of at this place now, they are talking to investors. What are some ways that you've automated this process and, and just really honed in that, that relationship piece? So once this is all done, for me, it has been more one-on-one -on -one calls uh, or, or I've just built a strong relationship. But now I'm moving on automating, making a video course uh, with more details. So even if they are not doing business with me, they are just getting very, very savvy at being passive investors. So either writing articles, a short ebook, some kind of video course, you could do any of those things to just keep providing value to your, to your investor base and use that when the new leads come in um, so they could just see you as an expert and then you know they're interested in having a call with you. 
any other ways right now that you are, uh, or, or are there any unique ways right now specifically to you that you're, you're finding investors? Um, okay, right now, anything specific? I don't have anything specific. It's just, you know, an investor from here, an investor from here. But I do know that I do have a good success with referrals overall in my business. Uh, I have not even done as much marketing, but I realized that I would go above and beyond and investors have told me when it comes to educating them. So when they tell me they're ready to invest, I'll still tell them about the risk. I'll make sure they understand. I'll be very patient and they really like that. And then doing some check-ins with them and you know, they are busy, but they appreciate just checking on after the investment here and there. And then naturally, you know, referral, uh, referral piece is a big one that I'm working on developing even more. So. KB, do, do you have any daily habits that you are disciplined about that have helped you achieve success? Absolutely. I'm a big, big fan of morning routine. Uh, so over the last three years, I, I carve out two hours in the morning where I meditate or I do Wim Hof breathing or I'm reading books that really um, inspire you or, or get you thinking about you know, the mental sciences, the early 1900s, anything that jives you. So doing all those things, writing something just puts you in that state where you are making better decisions and you're more inspired. Nice. Two hours. Yeah. And that's a big commitment. I, yes. I couldn't agree more. It's such an important commitment uh, to make. Uh, any, uh, uh, or what about any other improvements to the, uh, just to the capital raise side that you want Wanted to bring out. I wanted to give opportunity for that. Uh, just or recently, anything that you've learned, uh, just as your business has grown, uh, that you could just help us with also. Yes, for a capital raising, what I've learned is that the marketing has to be leveraged now. So if you are doing videos, figure out a way. This is something I'm working on. Uh, from videos, you could get the articles out. From the articles, you could do the ebook. From uh, your podcast, you could take small blurbs out. And, and post that, right? So once you put the time and effort into the content, making sure you're getting more mileage from that content and, and also systemizing the, the content creation process, working in batches. This way, these things happen versus if they're mixed into your day-to-day -day business, you know, you might not have time, right? How do you find somebody to help you get more mileage out of your content like that? So I've just spent a lot of, uh, I've just spent, invested a good amount of money with some marketing consultants. So I got the concepts and everything down and now it's just the execution piece. So depending on where you are, if you're not generating anything uh, content wise, it might be wise to just the step one and being honest with yourself that if you are not going to write just get the writer. If you're not going to edit the videos, just, just get the right. Because sometimes it just feels like, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Do I really want to invest? But it's all an investment that really you know helps you. So, What's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? I would say it's just the mindset and looking at myself and having coaches and, and consultants and them just looking at you differently the way yourself and creating that space to really observe yourself of what needs to be changed, what needs to be improved and, you know, the evolution. Yeah. Being willing to change is difficult, right? Especially in the beginning. Yes. <laughs> um, so how do you like to give back? I like to give back by I'm working on doing some things in India, like installing like a water filter system to this school. I'm working on making a library there as well. So certain parts where I grew up, there were no libraries in schools and things like that. So that has been a passion project that's moving along. So That's really neat. Love that. Uh, just way of giving back like that. Um, yeah, and that's, that's really outside the box seems like to me. So I, uh, that's neat. Uh, thanks for doing that. KP appreciate your time today and giving back to us and really just walking through, um, getting started in this business, uh, by uh, building those relationships with investors and thinking outside the box, realizing you do have ways that you can add value to people. Even if you're just getting started, most likely, uh, you're still ahead of some people, uh, that you could add value to. And, and so grateful for your time, uh, tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Yeah, thank you so much, Whitney, for the opportunity to share the message and, you know, 
I uh, really appreciate you taking the time, giving me an opportunity. And listeners could email me at Katen, K-E-T-A-N, at Katen Patel, K-E-T-A-N-P-A-T-L.com, or go to my website, KatenPatel.com. We'll be putting more resources on time management and decision and capital raising and all of the fascinating and we'll also launching a YouTube channel. So. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.